Can you solve this math challenge? Here's the question. Solve for the value of n given the 2 raised to 9 raised to n all over 8 raised to 3 raised to n equals 1 over 4. You can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. And now, let's answer this question together. So, our goal here is to solve for the value of n. Now, to answer this question, uh, I'd like to make the base equal to 2 because take note that 2 is 2 squared and 8 is 2 cubed. So, let's do that. Now, this 4 can be replaced by 2 squared and this 8 can be replaced by 2 cubed. Now, all of these bases is in terms of 2. Now, how about 1? 1 is just 2 raised to 0, but we will handle that later on. So now, let's simplify first. Take note that when we have a raised to b raised to the power of c, it is equivalent to a raised to b times c. Therefore, on the denominator, 2 raised to 3 raised to the power of 3 raised to n can be written as 2 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to n. Another law of exponents says that if we have b raised to a all over b raised to c, it is equivalent to b raised to a minus c. Therefore, the left-hand side of our equation can be written as follows. 2 raised to 9 raised to n minus 3 times 3 raised to n. Now, how about the right-hand side? Take note that when we have 1 over b raised to negative c, it is equivalent to b raised to the power of c. Now, if we have 1 over b raised to c, it is equivalent to b raised to negative c, or vice versa. So, the right-hand side can be written as 2 raised to negative 2. Now, at this point, take note that we have two equal expression and we have two equal bases. Therefore, we can say that their exponent must be the same. So, we have 9 raised to n minus 3 times 3 raised to n equals negative 2. Now, another thing to notice here is this 9. This 9 is 3 raised to 2. And take note that when we have b raised to a raised to the power of c, this can be written as b raised to c raised to the power of a. So we can interchange this 2 and n. Therefore, this can be written also as 3 raised to the power of n raised to the power of 2. Now, take note of this one. We have two common terms 3 raised to n. So, to make this simple, let y be equal to 3 raised to n. Therefore, we can replace 3 raised to n with the variable y, like this. So, this will give us y squared minus 3y equals negative 2. Now, this is just a quadratic equation. Let's equate this to 0 first. So, we have here y squared minus 3y plus 2 equals to 0. Now, when we have a quadratic equation, what we're going to do here is we need to factor this equation to solve for the value of y. Now, in order to factor this, I will use the AC method. So, first, make a cross like this. On the top part, we will have the product of A multiplied by C, or the numerical coefficient of the leading term multiplied by the constant term, which is 1 times 2. So, we will have positive 2 on the top. Now, on the bottom part, we have the numerical coefficient of the variable y, or the variable x, or any variable. So, this is just negative 3. And now, we need to think of two numbers a and b, such that the product of a and b must be 2, positive 2, and the sum of a and b must be negative 3. And the only possible values for a and b must be negative 1 and negative 2. Therefore, y squared minus 3y plus 2 can be factored as follows. We have y minus 1 multiplied by y minus 2. Now, let's focus on this factored form. And since it is equal to 0, we can say that at least one of them must be equal to 0. So we have y minus 1 equals to 0 or y minus 2 equals to 0. Now, on the first case, if we add 1 on both sides, we get that the value of y must be equal to 1. And on the Case number 2, if we add 2 on both sides, we get that the value of y must be equal to 2. Now, take note that y must be equal to 3 raised to the power of n. Therefore, we can replace all y with 
3 raised to the power of n like this. Now, let's solve for the value of n. That is what we want here. So, now, this one can be written as 3 raised to 0 because any number raised to 0 must be 1 provided that the base is not equal to 0. So, we have equal expression, equal bases, therefore the exponent must be the same. So, n must be equal to 0. Here's our first answer. Now, on the second case, we have 3 raised to n equals 2. At this point, to solve for the value of n, we need to convert this exponential equation to logarithmic equation. Take note that when we have b raised to a equals c, then this can be converted into a equals logarithm of c to the base of b. Therefore, this 3 raised to n equals 2 can be written as follows. n equals logarithm of 2 to the base of 3. Therefore, we have two possible values for n. Namely, we have n equals to 0 or n equals logarithm of 2 to the base of 3. And as always, we are done.